becomes completely purified of all material contamination, there develop an attachment and taste for devotional service. This taste and attachment, when gradually intensified in the course of time, become love. Taste and attachment. The word love can be actually applied only in relationship with the personality of Godhead. In the material world, love is not applicable at all. What goes on under the name of love in the material world is nothing but lust. There is a gulf of difference between love and lust, like the difference between gold and iron. <laughs> in the Narada Pancharatra, it is clearly stated that when lust is completely transferred to the Supreme Godhead, and the concept of kinship is completely reposed in Him, that is accepted as pure love of God by great authorities like Bhishma, Prahlad, Uddhava, and Narada. So, what is love? Love is attachment and taste. Taste means that we enjoy the qualities, the, uh, the nice qualities, the exalted qualities of the beloved. Uh -huh. So, is this possible in the material world? No. No. Because everybody in the material world, they may have some nice qualities, but they also have some bad qualities. Isn't it? Nobody's perfect, right? So we may try to love somebody in this material world, but as soon as we get close to them, we find, oh, they have so many bad qualities. <laughs> and then we're repelled by their bad qualities. Uh, all these beautiful rock stars and movie stars and all these people, huh, their marriages last about, you know, a year, a year and a half, two years, and then they're hitting the divorce court. Uh, and then they have, you know, boyfriends or girlfriends or whatever, and then, then, then they, they fight, sometimes very publicly, like right out in front of the cameras at the nightclubs, and then they break up, and then they get back together again, and then maybe then the police are involved, and then they sue each other, and then, you know, they get some other girlfriend, and then the same thing happens again. And, and these are the most beautiful, the richest, the most famous, the most talented, the most everything, whatever. Huh? And they're acting like cats and dogs, taking one mate and then another one and another one and another one, sometimes two, three at the same time. What kind of, this is animal behavior. Animals do that. Human beings are supposed to mate for life. Huh? But even then they can't. Now the divorce rate is going higher and higher. And so people aren't even bothering to get married anymore. You know, why bother? Probably going to break up anyway. So might as well just live together. That makes things easier. Huh? Less friction. <laughs> so they get together very quickly and then they break up very quickly. Huh? This is going on. I've seen it. We have some dogs who live down the street. Do they act like that? Very quickly, easily come together and then apart. Some fight. And that's it. It's over. Bye. Next. <laughs> Animals. Human beings aren't meant to live like that. Human beings are meant to have love. And love is composed of attachment and taste. But taste, if you have any taste, means you would only want to love someone who's perfect. Why would we want to love someone who has bad qualities, imperfections? Huh? Unless we're settling, unless we're compromising, unless we're, you know, settling for less than we're really capable of. That indicates a lack of respect for ourselves. But if we really want the best for ourselves, we'll only love someone who is perfect, and that's God. That's Krishna. Uh, Krishna has all good qualities in superabundance, unlimited, uh, ever increasing. So Krishna is the proper object for love. Actually, he's the only object for love because he's the only person who's perfect. 
Everyone else has some imperfection. I mean, actually, you can even find imperfection in Krishna if you look hard enough. Huh? Krishna is so perfect that he includes imperfection, but he's still perfect. Like some people say, well, if God is perfect and his creations are perfect, like the material world, then why is there suffering in this world? Well, because the material world is perfectly imperfect. <laughs> the material world is a place where people can come who don't want perfection, who don't want God, who don't want service to God, who don't want to love God, who want to have some separation from God. And because of this separation, everybody in this world is, su is suffering. They're feeling some pain, some deep discomfort and longing in their hearts. Uh, I know, I was, I was like that. I remember. It was horrible. Uh, you can never quite feel satisfied, no matter what you do. Try this, you try that, you go here, you go there, do this, do that, with this one, with that one, whatever, and then still no satisfaction. And this goes on and on and on and on. But why do we do this to ourselves? We could have a perfect beloved. We could have Krishna. Huh? Just try to understand. But Krishna is not going to accept you unless you're pure. That's why we're talking about pure love of God. Huh? He's not going to accept you if your love is divided between him and somebody else. Why should he? Huh? If you're going to marry somebody, some, let's say I'm going to marry some girl and I find out she's got another boyfriend. Oh, what's, what's going on? I mean, that's the end of that deal, right? So Krishna is the same way. Krishna is even more picky about that. He says, Vyavasayatmika buddhi. Uh, you, your intelligence has to be completely one-pointed and fixed on him. That's the only way he'll accept you. Sarvadharman paritya Mam ekam sharanam vraja. He says, give up all other different kinds of religion and only surrender to me. Surrender to me alone. Then I'll protect you and I'll save you from all sinful reactions. Yeah. Otherwise, forget it. No deal. Sorry. Next. <laughs> Try to understand. He's the supreme. He is the, he's the top. That's it. You can't go any higher. That's it. He's the absolute from which all else has come. So if we love him, then we achieve satisfaction. But we have to be pure. We have to get rid of all of our impurities. So great authorities like Bhishma have explained that love of Godhead means completely giving up all so-called love for any other person. According to Bhishma, Love means reposing one's affection completely upon one person, withdrawing all affinities for any other person. This pure love can be transferred to the Supreme Personality of Godhead under two conditions, out of ecstasy and out of the causeless mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself. In other words, everyone has the desire to love. Everyone has the power to love. Every spirit soul has, at his core, the desire to love. Hmm? But now, at the moment, our love is divided among so many different things. Our attachment, our pleasure, our identification uh, is divided amongst many, many different things. So how do we direct this love only towards Krishna. If we accept the Vedic philosophy that Krishna is the perfect object of love, then how do we transfer our love to Krishna? So Bhishma is saying out of, either out of ecstasy or out of the mercy of Krishna himself. So now we're going to examine those. Ecstasy. Ecstatic love of Godhead can be potently invoked simply by following the rules and regulations of devotional service as they are prescribed in the scriptures under the direction of a bona fide spiritual master. 
There's your answer. You want to know how? Follow the rules and regulations of devotional service as they're given in the scriptures under the direction of a bona fide spiritual master. You notice the very careful selection of words here. You follow the rules and regulations as they're given in the scriptures. Not as you think they should be, not as you guess they might be, not as you would like them to be, not as you imagined them to be, but as they are given in the revealed scriptures, not any other way. And under the direction of a bona fide spiritual master, not independently, not whimsically, not with your friends, not with your mom's cat, not with anybody, but under the direction of a bona fide spiritual master. And not a rascal spiritual master, a bona fide spiritual master. And the, the definition of a bona fide